Hey, you are listening to the Grumpy Guy BJJ Podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? Got to take care of a few things before we jump into this week's episode. First, our Ramping Isometrics for BJJ program. It is a 12-week program all laid out for you. It's going to help you build strength and cardio in the fastest, safest, and most convenient way possible. This is how James and I have been training for the past year, and we love it. So we put this program together so you can just follow along, and we are certain you will see and feel the benefits that we do. It's only 15 bucks. Just go to grumpyguybjj.com, click the drop-down menu in the upper right-hand corner, and you'll find it. Next, R3. Is, this is our K2 D3 supplement. It is a combination, combination of those two vitamins, D3 and K2. These are two vitamins that James and I have been taking for a long time that really help us recover from hard training sessions. And for only 15 bucks with free shipping, you get a whole month's supply. I was going to pull up some studies explaining the benefits of D3 and K2, but I'm not going to insult your intelligence and pretend to be a fucking scientist. I take it. It helps me recover. That's it. So for 15 bucks, check it out. And last, but certainly not least, we have partnered up with Dejitsu.com. They have a ton of awesome BJJ instructionals, and they have hooked us up with a discount code for our listeners. It's Grumpy10. So what you got to do is you go to Dejitsu.com, which is D-I-G-I-T-S-U.com. Find the instructionals you want, throw them in a shopping cart, in the little discount code box, you type in Grumpy10, which is just G-R-U-M-P-Y, and the number 10. One zero. That's it. No spaces. Boom. You get 10% off. You're up and running. They got a nice app you can download on your phone. That way you can take your instructions right to the gym with you. Watch the technique. Drill it. It's a pretty sweet setup. So once again, D-I-G-I-T-S-U dot com. Discount code Grumpy10, G-R-U-M-P-Y-1-0. Simple as that. To find all this stuff I just got done talking about, go to our website, GrumpyGuyBJJ.com. Click the drop-down menu in the upper right-hand corner. There, you'll subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates. You'll find links for the Ramping ISOs program, the R3 Recovery Supplement, and then under the Programs and Products tab, you'll find a link to Dejitsu.com. And let's be honest, if you guys can't figure out how to navigate a website by now, there's nothing I can do to help you. So quit fucking around, check it out, train hard, and let's get into this week's episode. Boom. And we're back. We are back. Yes. Episode. Who oh, fucking who cares? Who cares? <laughs> we're back. Fucking. I'm excited. Another episode. So, do you think it's funny that I'm proud that Z is in there pretending to drain his cauliflower ear? That is awesome. I thought. I know. Yeah, it I makes know. my heart warm, man. <laughs> he's in there. He's like, look, Dad, and he's like pretending to do it, and he's like, it didn't even hurt. I'm like, yeah. Yes. That's right, dude. You're he's, gonna, he's gonna be super pumped the first time he actually gets cauliflower. Maybe, man. You gotta earn that shit. They don't give that stuff out. Yeah, some people are more susceptible to it. It happens. Yeah, but most people don't just show up their first day. And you gotta put some time on the mat. Yeah. Even if you're susceptible to it, you still gotta you fucking you get your ears rubbed time. pretty hard time for quite a few times. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why my ears are fucking flaring up. I've been training hard last few weeks and no no he seems to be some you know because there's a lot of like collar ties and head control and attacking mm-hmm. the neck and nogi so it seems like your ears because a lot of it the cauliflower comes from the trauma of the ear yeah Not so, i mean the rubbing and the folding does you know fuck it up obviously and, yeah but it's the trauma it's the hit it's yeah. the hit the yeah. hit you know that's why boxers get it too yeah. so yeah when someone <laughs> slams the forearm into your ear is they're trying to collar tie you or, right or you know nogi's a little bit faster paced so sometimes you catch a knee or an elbow yeah, or a yeah. hip or something you know yeah, don't even know or yeah when like, i was doing we were doing takedowns today and i went to do that double leg and i slammed my side into your hip bone yeah slam my head into your hip bone that's a really good way to get cauliflower yep. yeah I'm, I'm lucky it was just my head Dude, if it would have caught my ear as hard as I hit your hip bone, that wouldn't have been good. I know. Remind me of Z. He comes in and headbutts me sometimes and he misses and hits the fucking the hip bone. <laughs> you see him like, oh, oh stun shit. himself. He doesn't want to say it though. It's like, I'm all right. It's like, yeah, that's why that's I tell you about exactly your headbutt, man. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, yeah, one of the, uh, the fun parts of jiu-jitsu is draining cauliflower ear. It's been on and off. 
for a while now. But if anybody's wondering, you can go to Walmart and get your insulin needles. I wonder if like every town's like that, you know, because you know, what James is alluding to, like none of the pharmacies around here will give you syringes unless you have a, unless you're a diabetic. Unless yeah, you have a prescription, prescription for, for insulin You know, like Rite Aid, your Walgreens, the City Market, or Kroger's, wherever the yeah. fuck you're at. Like I went to all those pharmacies and I couldn't get any syringes. And thankfully we have, you know, some training partners that are paramedics and EMTs and shit so they can get them. Yeah. But Walmart gave them to you. Yeah, 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 man. I was, uh, I remember the first time I went looking at uh, Walgreens, and it's funny. Not only will they not give it to you, they the pharmacists are they look at you like you're like you're what the fuck's wrong with you for even asking? Yeah, yeah. I caught some major things. I caught some major attitude from this pharmacist chick at Rite Aid, and I remember when I went in there, my ear was blowing up like excessively, and I looked at her. I was like, "Listen, I understand that you can't get these out because we have a lot of meth heads in this town. I get that, but look at me." First of all, they look like a meth head. Okay, maybe I do. I don't know. You don't know, yeah. But but look at my ear. At right. a point, I was like, hey, look at my ear. She's all like, I want to do is drink. These meth heads are so hardcore. They're beating each other's ears <laughs> up. Maybe that's what she thought. But she was super rude. I was like, listen, all I want to do is get the fluid out of this ear. I was like, it hurts. It was all purple. And it was huge. She's and like, she, nope. dude, she was rude as shit. Yeah. She was. Yeah, she yeah. She couldn't be bothered by it. That's right? funny, man. Yeah. Yeah. L- luckily, though, like I said, the first person, they had a little attitude, but it was funny. They were like, Walmart will sell them to you without a prescription. You know, I was like, okay. So maybe it's just normal Walmart. Cool. Walmart so, yeah, I went in. Well, it's funny. I looked it up online. You know, can you buy insulin needles without a prescription? And it's not illegal. No, it's not like, illegal. There's very few states where it's illegal. If anything, there's some states that have limits on how many you can buy. But it's not illegal. It's, it's just strictly store policy. It's a store policy. Yeah, yeah. And it's based on just being fucking... Um, oh, what's the word? Profiled. I'm being profiled, basically. I, I've seen a lot of methods. You don't really fit that profile. But I'm just saying. Yeah, well, exactly. But there, you know, that's what profiling is. is not taking a person individually and figuring out what their deal is. It's You're, you're using these heuristics like, you know, A equals B. You know, you're looking for insulin needles, you equal meth head. Because it's the only reason in their mind they can even imagine why you would want an insulin needle if you weren't a diabetic. Like I told you this story when I was in uh, in Greece and you could walk into the pharmacies and just buy uh, steroids. And primabolin is an uh, osteoporosis drug over there. And they're literally, uh, when we walked in, I remember one of the pharmacists, uh, ladies, older ladies, she's selling it to us and she's laughing and she's like, why do you guys want this old lady drug? <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, and we're trying to explain it to her. Like, no, it make, you know, makes you strong. Like, you know, grows muscles and stuff. And she just couldn't wrap her mind around it. You know, she, in her world, the only way that she saw this thing was as a, a, a something the old ladies came in That's and funny. got for osteoporosis. And so it's the same way, man, like these people, that, and that's, a, that's profiling, basically. You've got this very simple A equals B, you know, and uh, <clears throat> so that's why, but it's funny, that's what it is. Everybody's all like, oh, we're not going to profile, and it's like, dude, you can't help. It's one of the things like, uh, like Jordan Peterson talks about, like, man, you can't help but have hierarchies. Like, you, you make a choice. You, you fucking chose to get out of bed. It means that you decided that getting out of bed was more important than sitting in bed. You know what I mean? Like, you have to decide this stuff. So don't tell me you're not doing it. But, yeah, it's funny when you're sitting on the other side of the counter and you're like, yeah, I just want to drain my ear because I'm in, I'm in jujitsu. I'm like, you know, one of the mentally and physically healthiest things you can do for yourself. The one downside or one of the downsides, few downsides is, your ears tend to get beat the fuck up, so you need to drain them every once in a while. And in that world, it makes sense, but they're like, what the fuck do you want? Yeah, it's funny, in Greece too, you can't shoot steroids with insulin needles. So we would ask for needles, and they'd go to give us the insulin needles, because they, you know, thought we were shooting fucking heroin or something. And we're like, nah, the big ones. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, okay, here. <laughs> it's so awesome. It was funny, man. Yeah, totally different, like, mindset towards it you know because even though they weren't they had their idea when you're like you know they weren't like judging you it's like okay you want your fucking needles here man 
Have at, have it. at it. Mm. Yeah, whatever. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. I got an idea, but Who cares? So that's up to you. Mm. And yeah, you come over here and we're just judgmental as fuck. So, our puritanical ancestors, they took the Bible the wrong way. Like, the whole thing is not about judging other people. It's about judging yourself. That was what the whole fucking thing was about. It was just, you know, judge yourself. This is how you're supposed to judge yourself. But it's so much easier to judge other oh, people. Oh, so much easier to judge other people. More comforting. Yep. Exactly. That's what I like to do. That's why we fucking call Adam Fat Adam. Because we're judging Fat Adam. <laughs> we're judging Fat Adam. It makes me feel better about myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you realize it now, but I've, I've nicknamed his fucking half guard sweep the Jelly Roll. The Jelly Roll, yes. Fucking Fat Adam hit me with the Jelly Roll. Dude, like he says, size is a skill. It's bullshit. So, yeah. It is. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> I plan on cyberbullying him today. So I know, so I had to slip that in. I was like, yes, we get a chance to <laughs> take a jab at Adam early. Early. <laughs> early and often. Yeah, that's right. You're getting cyberbullied today, bitch. That's right. Hope you're ready. <laughs> Hope you're listening to this at work, feeling less about yourself. <laughs> anyways. Uh, anyways, so... Uh, Peterson, you said Jordan Peterson. Did you listen to him recently on yeah. Joe Rogan? I did. I did. You were so fucking smart, man. It takes, like, you, for me anyways... Like, I got to listen to those interviews a couple times through because she gets so deep into shit. Yeah. And then, like, my mind will trail off and I got to rewind it and then listen to it again. Like, man, I want to go listen to that guy talk again. I, I yeah. hope the tour comes through, man. Like, I, do, I really like that guy. I'd like to go see him yeah. next time we go. That'd be fun. We'll yeah. go next time. Yeah, it'd be. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You hear him talk and you think, like, all right, I've heard him talk before. What, oh, what else has he got? But, yeah, he's got. Another three hours. And of, he can just keep going. Dude. Yeah. You just get him wound up on something and you just keep going. He likes to think, man. You that's know? how he thinks. Yeah. That's why he likes these interviews and these speeches. And that's really his his way of getting sorting these thoughts out. Because you'll yeah. hear him. You can really see it. You'll hear him change his mind. Like, oh, as he's talking, you see the thoughts developing. And just, you know, man, it's, I, I dig that. Yeah. I it's, think it's just because like, it's so far from like where I am. And like what I'd like to be, I see that. I'm like that motherfucker is so like, because you can understand him. You know, he's not, he's not like Deepak Chopra. You know, it's not like fucking word sound. Right, right, you yeah. Know, like you try to listen to that guy talk, and you're like, dude, you're just putting a bunch of yeah, words yeah. together. You can't just put the word quantum on yeah, I'm, something. I'm, I'm, <laughs> science or whatever. That's what that guy does. I swear. I know. And, and this guy's just talking real world shit and just really hashing out all these complex thoughts and reasons and like, man, it's just. Our world needs more guys like that. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting, though, because I'm listening to Goggins, too, but they both had the same message, which is that life is fucking struggle. Yeah, it's That's about That's it. It's life about is struggle. struggle. It's about the struggle. And you, got, you can either accept that it's about the struggle... And that you're going to grow from it, and that's what you're here for, and, and you're going to be better for it. Or you can rage against it, and you can just try to get out of it. And it's like, it was funny, though, because I listened to Pete and Jordan, and then uh, I'm listening to David. And it's like, listening to them back to back like that, you can hear the same message kind of resonating, where they were both talking about, like, dude, life is struggle. And it never ends. It never ends. There's never no ends. end to it. There's no end to you it. You don't want an end to it. You don't want an end to it. That's the thing. We've been sold this idea and it's not what you want. There's not some end goal to where you're riding off into the sunset holding hands with your partner. Like, it just, yeah. it's, that's not it, man. No. Like, you need that struggle. You know, that's why I listened to three podcasts this week that really had that same message and coming from all different angles. You know, you had Jordan Peterson, David Goggins, <clears> and then Joe DeSena. And I think I'm saying his last name right. He's the guy who created Spartan Race. Okay. Really interesting dude. If you've never you know read about him or listened to any interviews, the dude's crazy, smart, but he's fucking crazy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but he's he's kind of like David Goggins level crazy, you know, just but just a different right. And, and but that's what he talks about is that that struggle. And he's got it's funny. He was talking about a lot of different things, but he, he's got two boys. I think they're, you know, like 11, 12, 13, you know, they're young, younger kids. And he's, because and he, he's really well off. I mean, he's done really good for himself. He yeah. made a fuck ton of money on Wall Street. And then he started Spartan and he's done a bunch of things. So he's, you know, he's not hurting. And he's got this idea now. He's like, he's like, I see what having this, this cush life is doing to my kids. He's like, there's not enough struggle in their life. And he's like, he's like, I'm super close to like moving to like fucking Kazakhstan 
<laughs> selling rugs in, in the market and, and telling them we don't have shit. Ruining like, my, my kids. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> he's like, we, he's like, we, he's like, we, he's like, they need to have a life of struggle to uh, where like we need to go sell these fucking rugs to these locals or we're not eating today. You know, it, it, everything's not cush. Yeah. You know, he's like, I see a lot of characteristics coming out of him. He's like, he's like, I don't like. He's like, because I provided a really good life for him. He's like, and me just forcing struggle on them isn't the same. It's not the same. It's not the same as like, you know, hey, go do a bunch of push-ups or something. It's, it's not the same. He's like, I, he's like, I think these little fuckers need some real struggle. Yeah. <laughs> so he's talking. The dude's a little crazy, man. But it's, no, man, it's true though. Cause I, I go through the same thing. I mean, I, I, I see it. I mean, I def- but that's the hard thing is like you, you instinctively want to give yeah. your kids a better life than you had, you know. But there were some things that were definitely, you know, I look back on. It's like, yeah, they sucked at the time, but like they formed who I am now. It's like you need that struggle. And it's hard to manufacture it. It's got to be authentic. And, you know, yeah. The, but you, what do you do? What do you do? Do, you I do? I don't know. I don't yeah. know what the answer is. I, I don't know what the answer is. And that's, I, yeah. I mean, I for me, I try to, I think just being conscious of it, that, that's obviously the first step. Because if, if you're not aware of it, that's when things really just get the fuck out of control. Because all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? So... Seeing it and realizing, like, okay, what's going? You know, how can I manipulate this situation? What can I do? Maybe, I, maybe it's not perfect. Maybe it's not going to replace it. But what, what can I do to try to at least make the best of the situation? And uh, man, I know, like for me, that's part of the reason why I made Shiloh do basketball. Like, she did not want to play basketball. And I'm like, I know you don't want to play basketball, and that's great. I'm glad you don't want to play basketball because it's going to be a struggle, and you're gonna the things you're going to get from that struggle are what you're looking for. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I said, you can't manufacture it, but you, I mean, there's definitely things you can do, but I, I struggle with it too. Yeah. It's, it, like, there's no good answer. And I was, I can't remember what interview I was listening to and they we were talking about the same thing. And it's not like you can just tell your kids, Hey, like here's the 10 most important things in life and give them this, this moral outline. I mean, you can, but it's not the same as actually just living life and them seeing you getting put in certain situations and how you behave. Yeah. And that's where the real lessons really come. You know, like you say, if you manufacture it, it's not quite the same. They're not going to sink in. It's just, it's not going to, it's not going to resonate. Yeah. But when they see if something bad happens, everybody's got, you know, bad shit that happens or, you know, in life. And they see how you handle it. That, that's when those, they, they, they might not realize they're learning those lessons. I, I, I look back on things that happened, you know, growing up. And I, obviously I had no idea they were lessons at the time. And maybe with, maybe they weren't even meant to be lessons, but they were just life. Yeah. And how my dad handled it and what I learned from it. But you don't learn it until later on, until you get older. But it was just life happening. Yeah. yeah that, that's the only way you can... Yeah, that's what we're built for, man. We yeah. need the struggle. We need the struggle, dude. We need you can't, the struggle. When everything is too cozy and comfy and Yeah. It's Yeah, no, that's uh um yeah, it's unfortunate though that there's because what you do is you run into people, you know, we, we do, we've got these generation, I mean that's what the millennials problem is, is they came up without the struggle. I mean they didn't even have to worry about a first place trophy in their fucking soccer league, you know, growing up. It's like if everybody just got a participation trophy and so people try to take the struggle and competitiveness out of because they don't everything. want their, they don't want their kids to feel bad. Feel bad, right? Because no, that's need, part of struggle. You, you need that bad feeling. Right. Get your ass that bad feeling. Like, oh, right. fuck, man! I got this bullshit second place medal, and that guy's got the first place trophy. Like, this or you is... want to be better? Here's what you do to get better. Yeah. But the, but the parents don't see that, you know, and that's not. And so you end up with these kids who didn't come up with the struggle, and now they're looking around at the world, and the world was formed by struggle and is populated for the most part by people who were brought up in struggle and they're looking around and they're like, well, I just don't get it. I just don't understand. Like why, you know, why are things the way that they are? And it's like, well, motherfucker, you just don't, it's just the way that they are, right? Like it's, it, you're, we got these biological imperatives that you're not going to like, boys are different than girls. Like guys like to take risks and girls like to, uh, I mean, their instinct is more 
maternal than guys is. It just is, and our instinct is more risk taking. And that book that I just, uh, I'm almost done with that. The uh, socially, socially, fucking super. I'm, good, I'm about man. to get into it. <clears throat> super good. But, you know, one of the things he talks about is like, like all that makes sense from a biological perspective. That if you're a man, and and you're and you take risks. And, you know, the, the, if you're successful with the risks, you're proving that you're, uh, you know, competent. And if you, sur- if, you, if you fuck up and you survive, you're showing that you're robust. You know, both of these things are, uh, are good. They're good indicators if, if a woman is trying to figure out, like, which one of these motherfuckers do I want to, you know, pick to father and help me raise a kid? Because it's a huge commitment on their part and it's very tough to do especially before like modern society it's very tough to do on your own and so you had to choose wisely you had to choose the the, your mate wisely and so all of this stuff is uh you know wired into us and it's just it is the way that it is right and so there's no running away from it there's no running away from it and trying to get to this world where these things don't exist so that someone who's you know, gay or someone who identifies as, you know, they're a man, they identify as a woman. Like, dude, I don't want a society where those people feel like bad and ostracized, but trying to create a society where those people are, where there's just nothing, like nothing's normal, right? Like eh, everything's just everything, you know, it's like in the, um, everybody belongs to everybody, like, you know, from the fucking brave new world. And it's like, but that's not the, like, that's this, this utopian, you know, theory that's just not real. Like, we're just wired differently. And again, like, you know, taking to an extreme, like, yeah, we don't want to have people that don't fit that normal profile, you know, being persecuted or ostracized or anything like that. But, man, to try to pretend that we aren't what we are, like, there isn't a normal, is fucking ridiculous. And, and trying to shove people into a box, like, dude, we want to be competitive. Like, boys want to be competitive. We want to take risks. And so now you're trying to, you can't take that out of us. And so, like, you know, trying to take that out of sports, you're not going to fix, like, that's not going to fix, you're not going to change their DNA. Mm -mm. It's not going to happen. All you're doing is, like, now they don't have an outlet for what the fuck, like, their DNA is telling them to do. They have no outlet for it. And, And you're just, man, you're teaching them some fucked up lessons and we don't, we haven't been doing this long enough as a society to see what the ramifications are going to be. I mean, to a certain extent we have, but you know, if you go to some kid soccer league and the, the league rule is to not keep score, you know, those kids are keeping score in their head. Most of them are. I, I would I know I would have as a kid. I would have. I, I wouldn't say sure. they all are, but that's the problem is like the ones that are going to be like, there are the ones that do. And because they're naturally competitive, and then they're the ones that don't, and they're almost the ones who need it more because they're not naturally competitive and they're comfortable with not being competitive. But that's not life, right? So like, I don't, I don't think all of them keep score, but that's the problem. Like the ones that do don't need it. I see. I think the scores for the motherfuckers that don't keep scores to like let them know, like, hey man, like there's there's a correlation between struggle and and success. I think back when we were growing up, I would have to guess that 95% of the kids would have been keeping score, even if the parents weren't. You know, you might have had a couple of kids that just really didn't want to be there. Or yeah. Work, but, and, when we were kids, I don't know, man, I look around today and I see a lot of glassy-eyed motherfuckers that yeah. couldn't care less. Yeah, I, I think nowadays, that I think that number is drastically different. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that that's... We, People just aren't, they're not, kids are not as naturally competitive as they were. And that's because all the fucking hard edges have been nerfed. You know, we've just been told, like, competitiveness equals aggression, and aggression is bad. Like, I think, because again, that's the math equation that arrives at that. Like, being competitive leads to aggressiveness, and everyone knows that aggressiveness is bad. And so we don't want to encourage aggressiveness, so we don't want to encourage competitiveness. And it's like... That's how this fucking logic sequence flows. And it's, it, it, again, it's like, man, that is so simplistic. That, and, and it's just not, not how, how we work. It's not how we work. It's not how we're wired. And if you don't give people that outlet, they're going to, I mean, 
they're gonna get aggressive. They're, they're gonna get aggressive. The outlets, it's gonna they need competitive outlets. It's gonna boil, boil, boil until it boils over the edge of the pot and something yeah. goes way sideways. Yeah, cause I know, cause I know, man. Like after a hard day of training or a hard mm-hmm. workout, like I, there's a lot of stuff like I don't give a fuck about, or you know, like. I used to have like a temper, kind of a temper issue, I guess you could say. You know, I wasn't real good at controlling my anger, you know, as yeah. a kid. Like, it led to me getting in a lot of fights as a kid. It's just because I, I would just get so angry and I wouldn't know what to do and I'd just start fucking swinging. You know, it's just, you're a kid, it just happens. And, but now, like, I have the jujitsu outlet or the fitness outlet and I, where I just empty it. And then I'm, I'm good, man. Yeah. Like, I can have some stupid shit happen, people be super rude to me. And I just kind of chuckle. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I had this I had this lady be super fucking rude to me at work. I think it was like on Wednesday or something. Then she was just being cunty. Like just flat out just not being a nice person. And and I could tell she like almost <laughs> wanted an argument. But I, you could I, I could tell I know what you mean. And man. I looked at her and I, I processed it for a minute because she was being super rude to me. I showed up to do this delivery and she was being super rude and I just looked her in the eye. And I thought for a second before I responded. And I, I just like, I was like, huh, it's interesting you think like that. Do you want this delivery or would you like me to leave? And dude, I see her blood pressure just fucking boil. Because I said it that calm, I was just smiling. I was like, hey, this is the situation we have right here. Right, yeah. I was like, I don't know where you're trying to go with being so mean. I don't, I don't understand what the upside is. I'm not going to get into it with you. Yeah. I was like, I don't care. Yeah. Because I can just as happily I, I can just as happily get back in my truck and drive away. Right. Or you can give this to you. Like I honestly do not care. Yeah. I'm not gonna argue with you about this. And do that that set her off even more. more. They it hate was funny, that even dude. More. They're and, used to people caring so much about their jobs that they're like they wouldn't matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like to see, so to see you keep, so I mean one, like the jujitsu, but two, like, but the jujitsu gives you a perspective that other people don't have yeah. with that too. But like, I, I don't need to rub it. I, yeah. I know exactly. I know the type, man. They're the, used to people kissing their fucking And ass. that's what it was. And she, you, you, she didn't know how to react except for just anger when I gave her that response. And I get, and she just was so flustered. Oh no, I want that delivery. And so I just went about, I just walked away and she's still jawing at me. And I just walked away, was doing my thing, unloading it, and she came out, was jawing at me some more, and I, I dude, I just smiled at her, I was just chuckling on the end. I mean, dude, honestly, I mean, there was a little part of me that was like, okay, I want to give this lady an earful, because I can tell she's not very bright. Like, okay, you're going to challenge me like this? Like, I'm going to shut you the fuck down. I was like, no, I can't, I can't hit you with a Matt Hughes-style double leg and break your hip. I understand that's not acceptable, but I, I'm going to do this verbally and you're going to get fucked up because you don't seem very smart. Mental karate. I'm even going to hit you with some mental karate. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I, I thought about that and I was like, no, that's just my ego talking. Like, I don't even have to exert myself yeah. like that. There's no reason. Nope. I was like, then, then you know, because she <clears throat> could even walk away thinking she, quote unquote, won this battle. I was like, no, I was like, I'm not even going to give her a battle to win. Yeah. You know, and, oh, dude, it frustrated her so bad, dude. That's funny. It was, it was funny. Yeah. It was one of those weeks for me. That was just another one I had to do. That is hilarious. Yeah, you've had an interesting... It's been interesting. Interesting week, for sure. But, but uh, yeah. Because yeah, no, people don't have that outlet. No, they don't have that outlet. Yeah. And no. so then they, then they behave like that in the fucking real world. Yeah. Like, really, man? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, on both ends of the spectrum, man. Like, for kids, it's like kids who, you know, would be bullied and kids who would be bullies. Like, both of them, would, you know, benefit from having some sort of competitive outlet. I mean, especially if we talk, if every school made kids wrestle or do jujitsu or something It would like decrease that. the bullying oh, almost, immensely. Immensely. Yeah. It's still going to happen. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, yeah. It's... Yeah. I mean, you just, yeah. Your, your, your rare Super Bully coming out of a, a program like that is going to be far outweighed by the amount of people who just, one, you just don't have the energy. Like you're saying, man, like, you know what you don't have the energy to do when you're fucking exhausted from wrestling all the time? Like, worry about bullying people. <laughs> like, you just don't care. You just want to eat and rest. Yeah, man, man that's your world. <laughs> and, and, and it's, uh, yeah, dude, it's, it's such a, it's, it's just sad, man. Because it, it is, like, if we want a better world, we want to encourage that shit. Because, like, like, what is the sports and stuff? Like, that's the one of those areas in life that... You get judged on who you are. I mean, talk about it. Like, honestly, it takes the rare 
just bigoted asshole to really give a fuck like you know whatever you know prejudice or whatever you have man you get put in a situation and it's like everyone who's here on my team and can help me win like I'm judging them on on who they are and how they can help me win and it doesn't matter economic race fucking I don't even care if you're gay straight I don't give a fuck you know like you're being judged based on who you are as a person how you're contributing to the tribe you know, and these are these like super basic things that, again, like we evolved to judge people based on and, and we, you know, you lose that in, in our society. One, cause like we, we don't have, we're technology and all this shit allows us to live more isolated lives. We don't need the, the tribe like we used to. So before it was like, dude, just getting through a day was a team effort and, and, you know, beyond that like sports and other competitive things because, you know, all these societies had some, you know, you look at hunter-gatherer societies, they have ritualistic competitions. Like they have ways to, you know, outlets for these things so they don't spill over into like full-scale, out-of-control war and shit and people getting out of control. And it's like, man, that's how you do it. That's how we grew up. And, and yeah, now people are like, no, no. And it's super squirrely because... Like they're, you know, you were saying how you use sports and teams and tribes to judge people, but not judge people in a bad way. You know, you just, you're figuring out where they fit in the tribe, how they're a contributing member, if they are, you know, what, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses. And it's okay, we all got those weaknesses. You want to know if you're going to throw rocks at that line, are you going to stand next to me or are you going to run? Right. That's, that, that's, that's what that's, you that's need what to know. sport on, on its most, uh, at its core, like that's what sport. Sports and these competitive outlets allow you to judge about a person. Like, dude, when you get hit in the mouth, are you gonna fucking run or are you gonna stand your ground next to me? Like, that's that's how I'm judging you. Right, right, and, and that's, that's what good. sports do, and that's good, and that's super important as a society. And then we're taking that away, and so we don't have that that proving ground, so to speak, on and to on how to judge people. But then they also tell you that you're not supposed to judge people. So, like, as a species, like, it, shit just gets super fucking confusing. Yeah. It, it, like, it's impossible. It's impossible. Like, that's you not how... You have to have a hierarchy. You gotta have a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. there, it's it's gonna develop. It's gonna yeah. happen. Hierarchies happen, man. They, they're gonna happen. Yeah. It's, and you can't strip that away. And no. I, I don't understand, like, you know, Yeah, I... I don't know. You, you get. I think people are sold this fucking stupid bill of goods that there's this utop utopian, non-judgmental, everybody's equal society. Something. Yeah, yeah. And that, dude, that's not the case. No, man. man. Yeah, we got. They, it, it sounds good on paper, but it's just. It, it's not. It's not, it's not realistic, reality. dude. It's not reality. It's not reality, man. We're organisms. We're wired to. You know, if you're if you were to program a, uh, a you know a robot, right? From scratch, would we want it? How would you want it to work? Okay, great. That may be how you would want it to work, but like, guess fucking what? That's not what we are. We're not robots. Like, we come as organisms, we come with pre wired with certain ways that we work. So, what we got to do is look and understand that. And then, okay, now we know, you know, okay, this is, this is why, like, there is a, there is a biological genetic reason that we have what you would call racist uh, tendencies, bigoted tendencies. It was interesting, again, in this book, one of the things that he talked about was like, you know, as a tribe, as a hunter-gatherer tribe, your uh, contact with another tribe could prove fatal because they could be, they could have a pathogen or disease that you don't have an immunity to. And so it was really... Um, you we, we you needed to be very cautious of others. You needed you know you also needed to see were they going to be helpful to our tribe or were they going to try to fucking come over here and kill us and take our women. And so it was like we came up our our genes were developed in a in a much different environment. And again, so now that you understand that, you can understand like okay, like there, this is the reaction to why I feel this way towards the quote unquote the other but that's not the world I live in today so I don't have you know again we, we always have that choice the dude cuts you off you start to feel anger you have the choice do I do I act on that anger or do I fucking be a, a, a self-conscious person and divert my actions into a better 
direction. And it's the same thing. It's like, okay, like I'm not a racist just because I have this reaction to quote unquote the other. I'm a racist if I continue to fucking just mindlessly react to it without any thought. Like that's not, oh, that's not okay. But, and then that's where people, it's like, no, you just have the thought. You're a racist. And it's like, but I, what the fuck you want me to do? You know what I mean? Like I have these genes that are, are triggering these things. And you so, know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one thing. Yeah, you, it's it's in wired in us to notice something different. Something different. Something, someone or something that looks different than you. It's wired in you for you to notice it's different. But like in this day and age, you know, if you see somebody that looks different than you at the grocery store, that's it. You see him? Oh, this dude's not trying to kill me and steal my shit? I'm right. good. Done. This is more like that's profiling. It. Where we, profiling. We talking about it used to be like, hey, black person equals potential criminal. Right. That's fucking profiling, right. man. No, that's not where... And that and that comes from like that other instinct without understanding where it came from, why it's not as useful today, and how we can divert our actions in better directions. But yeah, you're, we are wired to notice the other because they could be potentially... Back uh, in the... You know, bad. Yeah, or, or know, way back when they could be dangerous or... Even now in some parts of the world. Even know, unknowingly. Didn't. Like I said, yeah. they, they could be friendly but have a pathogen, right? right? So again, this is why like you're just... You, you're, your, your instinct is right. to be like, oh, okay, what's going on here? I'm going to fill you out. It, it's more... It's not even like negative. That's what he was saying. Is like, it's not even that we're wired to be negative. We're wired to be cautiously neutral towards n potential new groups and, and new things. You know, we want to feel it out and figure out, okay, is this going to be a benefit or not? But I mean, we're not really wired to just see a new something different and just be like, I hate that. No. Like that, that's, that's not, you have to almost, you got to be taught that a little bit. Like that's, again, like yeah, where racism comes in. Yeah. Where you're like, you know, you grow up in a white supremacist family. It's just always telling you like, you see anyone who's not white, you hate this. <laughs> it's like, fuck, are you know, like that's different. That's conditioning. You know, right. to, to an extreme, but that's not what we're wired for, really. So again, it's kind of a misunderstanding. Like we're not really like we're just wired to be, you know, cautiously neutral. Let's figure out, like, okay, are you? And again, it's uh, man, in this it's, day it's and age, in this day and age, even having this conversation, like, it would cause some people to freak the fuck out. But but that's the thing, you shouldn't, like, because we're should. not saying anything bad. <laughs> it's biology, we're, man. Yeah, just it's just the way it is. Well, that's what, yeah. And anybody who knows you and I, I mean, dude, we're the furthest thing from fucking being racist towards anybody. You know? Yeah. We're team people, man. Just don't be an asshole. Yeah, Simple yeah, Simple yeah. as that. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't give a fuck what you're doing with your life. As long as you're not being an asshole to me or the people I care about. Like, right. Like, rock on, brother. I don't, you know, I don't care. Yeah, don't, I don't want, I don't want your shit to affect my life either, you know? Yeah. And that's where, like, the whole Jordan Peterson thing came in where he was like, wait a minute. Like, I don't care how you want to dress, but I'm not going to call you a Z. Like, you cannot fucking legally mandate that I have to, like, because now you're imposing on me, you know? Like, now right. you're imposing on my freedom of speech and my Yeah, to, to make it a legal will. thing, that's, that's, yeah, you can't yeah. do that. Right, see, that's going to the extreme of, like, wait a minute, okay, like, I don't care what you do, but you can't impose your views on me like if you want to be called z that's fine or she whatever the fuck z it is, or, whatever. whatever you ask me to call you that and i'm cool and i may may call you that whatever but dude going yeah you can't force that on people now you're becoming and that's the problem like that always happens the oppressed almost become the always oppressors. become the oppressors man yeah, yeah, yeah it's happened through history it's just, yeah it's wild so it uh yeah it's crazy fucking Crazy stuff. You're gonna dig that book. It's man. funny that you know this whole conversation started with like Jordan Peterson, basically this part of it, and then just talking about him, and then like where that conversation leads, like that's what needs to happen more. You know, yeah. we need more guys like him out there leading that fight. Of just it's, it's like kind of like common sense, really. You know, and, and that's what's so crazy is. That dude just gets fucking blasted in the media as being like some like neo Nazi racist. Uh, oh yeah, it, insane. Yeah, it's fucking insane. If you listen to it, so far from actually what is going on, so far. Yeah, but you know they just hear little snippets or this yep. or that, and then one person reads some article title, you know, that says, "Oh, Jordan, Jordan Peterson, neo Nazi," you know, says this. 
And like, oh, this guy's a fucking neo-Nazi. And so then the, they run with it, and it's just like, what is going on here? Yeah, man? that's like, why he chops up like pretty much everyone who interviews him, him. He eats them up, and it's like, I, it's it, it's a little I, I just think about when you're talking about it, because he's like the fucking savage on the edge of of civilization, and he's always under attack. And he's just constantly honing his skills. Yeah, he's constantly sharpening that thinking, sword. Yeah. Constantly. Because he has to. He's constantly using it. But he goes up against people who don't. No. They live in the cushy walls of, you know, like, this is how things are. And everybody's comfortable with it. And I don't have to think because everyone just accepts what I say. And nothing that I say is ever challenged on any level. And, and so they're mentally soft. And so, but there's so fucking many of them. And they're able to use their numbers to, you know, influence people's opinion. But like one on one, he's able to just dice them up. Yeah, dice them up. They have, he's only talked to a couple people that can intellectually be on his level, you know, with deep thought. And yeah. most of them that try to just get fucking killed. Yeah. They, they can't hang. Yeah. You know, he's a black belt with that shit. Well, yeah, yeah. Like you said, that's why his thoughts yeah. are always evolving because yeah. he's constantly thinking about them because he's constantly, you know, under attack and having to think about, okay, well, yeah, like, you know, and the attacks, you know, evolve and stuff and, you know, because he says something and people are like, oh, well, we're going to take this out of context and so it makes him think like, huh, you know, well, what, you know, what the fuck could I have said that was different or what, you know, whatever. I, I don't, again, I don't want to put words in his mouth or whatever, but it's like that constant um, attack. And because there's so, people, him and people like him, there's so fewer of them. Like I said, and they're always under attack. And so it's like, it's, uh, yeah, you sharpen your mental skills when you're living on the edge of civilization and you get fucking the struggle. Well, I mean, he's basically just out there sparring constantly. Constantly. Yeah, and you're just, you're going to get better at it, man. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's so, hard to do that when you're on the other side because who's going to spar with you? No, right. like you guys are just in there in a fucking mutual back padding contest. Like, mm -hmm. oh, well, that's a good point, sir. And I'm going to make this point. Well, that's a great point, too, because we agree on fucking everything. It's like, okay. And well, then you go up against someone who's like, no, that's bullshit. And here's why. It's like, oh, 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 humbug. Everybody knows that it's this way. And. It's like, no, motherfucker. Like, everybody knows it's not a valid argument. Like, let's hear some real... Uh, I mean, really what's it, what it is, like Jordan Peterson and all that, it's it's just Socratic discussion. Yeah. It's all it is, it's man. It is. Yeah, you go back and you read fucking Socrates, which I just happen to be doing uh, at the moment. And yeah, it's all it is, man. It's just Socratic discussion. Just using questions and... You know, trying to fucking use logic and yeah, it's uh, so it's just a revival of something that was lost. I mean, we've talked about this before. It's just, I think the the medium of television and entertainment technology, man, it's just, we went through a period where humans did not, uh, I mean, we're still not handling it well, but I mean, a lot of the traditional shit, like we just thought we were gonna do away with all of the traditional ways of communicating with these new ways of doing it. And he said, we're finding out that, man, people still like long form discussions on stuff. People still like to hold a book in their hands. Like there's things you're just not going to do away with, with technology and, you know, five minute, uh, sound interviews, bites and sound clips, bites yeah. and clips and stuff. Like it's just that's not what's going to happen. Well, so. most of these thoughts and these ideas are just too complex. Yeah, to just to do that. Yeah, yeah. No, they are. Yeah, yeah. They, they really are. Most of them. Man. Like anything that really means anything or has some substance to it. Like yeah, you need the long form. Yeah. Discussions, thought processes. You need. And yeah, I, I'm old school, dude. Like I love hard, hard copy. Books I know you do. Man. I, 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 that's how I've I've made that leap. Like I. I don't read anything on my Kindle anymore. Yeah. I just, I, I really like the books, man. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I just like being able to turn the pages, hold the book in my hand. Like, I know it's cumbersome. Like, if you're going to travel and you don't want to take, you know, five books with you, it takes a bunch of space in your backpack. I get that. I understand the the convenience of the Kindle and you can just have a million goddamn books on there. I totally get it. I'm, I'm not ignorant to that. 
I like the book, man. I, yeah. really, I really do. There's I really, something to it. There's something sure. to it. I don't know why. I can't really explain it. You know, and I, yeah, I get really particular too. I, I like a certain font size. You know, I don't want it too big. I don't want it too little. Like, yeah, I get particular because I would buy some books and uh, some of them, you know, will come in like a just real false, small, small font size. Like, motherfucker, man, what are we trying to do here? Are you trying to like really kill my eyes? <laughs> I'm getting old. I need a little. Save a few trees, save man. Save a few trees or something. I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah. Like, get, get a normal. Uh, there's only been a couple books like that. Like, like really? Like, you went with an extra small size. Because most of them are pretty average. Right. They all kind of pick the same size. Yeah. Some of them, it's like, man, what are you doing? That's why they, they get those magnifying glass things. My grandparents used to have that. <laughs> maybe, 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 the reading magnifier. I need, I need that, was, that was for the, the, the TV guide, though. That's <laughs> what that TV was for. Guide. <laughs> so they could read that. That had the super small print. Oh, You're trying to decipher, like, it's Saturday night. What's on? That ain't what's on. Wait a minute. What week is this? <laughs> it's the wrong one. Give me this week's... <laughs> <laughs> that's some old school shit right there. <laughs> fucking TV guides TV guides the only way to know what's on man so cause that was before they even had like the preview channel oh yeah you couldn't just go to the channel 14 or whatever it was I can't remember and no. just watch it scroll yeah no like they do they still have that in hotels you can go to the you go to the they hotel they do you, you gotta go to the preview channel and yeah, see what's on yeah see what's on or just at least see what the channels are see what the channels are it's fucking so, bullshit I just gotta see what ESPN is <laughs> turn it to there and leave it I don't fucking watch anything else. Did you, uh, speaking of watching shit, this is, you know, this will air a week from now, so by the time you guys hear this, is kind of old, but did you watch any of the Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder? Man, I didn't watch any of the fight. I, I, the next, I didn't, I wasn't willing to pay $75 for the pay-per-view, but the, as soon as I woke up the next morning, I you know, went to YouTube and had somebody had pirated it on there. It was fun. It was a good boxing match, was it? dude. Yeah, it was really good. That, I mean, both those guys are fucking huge. I mean, uh, Tyson Fury's 6'9", I think, or something yeah. stupid. Deontay Wilder's like 6'7". Yeah. yeah and, and Jesus Christ, but they move. And for heavyweights, like, it was an action-packed fight. The whole time, there was not no bullshit clinching and, you know, dragging it out. Like, Tyson Fury can fucking box. Yeah. A big, goofy, white fucking gypsy can box, dude. <laughs> he, was, he boxed him up. But, like, it's so weird that, you know, Deontay Wilder... That fucking guy has got like Thor's hammer for fist. Like, he doesn't, he's definitely not the most technical boxer. I mean, the dude can box, obviously. He's a goddamn yeah. heavyweight champion. But compared, I mean, Tyson Fury just outclassed him. But it didn't matter, man. Like, he, like, even the punches he throws, it doesn't, like, if a normal human being threw that punch, like, it might sting, but it ain't knocking down some 6'9, 260 pound dude. No, dude. He hits you with that fucking hand and you are going down. Like, it's so crazy to watch. It's like, what? Like, dude, it's like watching fucking superhumans go at it, man. It was really cool. Huh. It, was, it was fun to watch. Man, I haven't watched a boxing match in the, This is worth ever. watching. Yeah, I don't watch it. I'm not a huge boxing yeah. fan. Yeah. But this is worth watching, dude. Yeah. It really I'll check was. it out. I'll go yeah. find some pirated YouTube. I'm sure you can find it by now. Yeah, someone else kicked off YouTube. Yeah. Dude, you see, you're not on Instagram, but Instagram's like getting like ruthless with, uh, like, if you post, so if you take a video of your TV, playing an NFL game and post it, they're fucking flagging you and like pulling your account for three days. Are you getting like grounded? You get sent to your room for three yeah, days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, like you can get like booted off Instagram for copyrighted, like posting copyrighted stuff. So like UFC fights, uh, football, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. If someone's like, you know, got a video of their TV and then post it, then they're getting all bitchy about it. I wonder why. I wonder what's motivating it's, that. It's Metallica syndrome. I mean, you remember. It's fucking Napster. Napster, Napster yep. all over again. Yep, exactly, man. It's like the pe- they, the they're like, they're stealing money from us. Like, we're losing money. You know, these people are posting our product for free. And so they're probably, like, threatening them on some level, you know, because you're providing the medium. They, they've that's got what it. happened to Napster. Yeah, they fucking, you know, that's why they had to play ball because there were, you know, that was that was their claim. So, yeah, it's just fucking Metallica and Napster all over again. It's dude, these things are cyclical. It's ridiculous. Like anyone who can't, if you've been alive for close to four decades and you ain't noticed a pattern or two, like. <laughs> 
I don't know where you've been, man. Like, things just go round and round. So, it's how they happen. But, mm-hmm. uh, That's interesting. You, know, you wonder, like, you know, is the NFL trying to sue Instagram or something, threatening them? Or, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's got to it's gotta be something along those lines. Yeah. Which is so, it seems so ridiculous because it's not like someone's posting a whole game. I know. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't see the common sense in it. And then... How is that taking away from any money from the NFL? I, I don't understand. Well, yeah, it, see, it seems like it would bring more eyes to them. Like, you know, say someone was on the fence about. Well, see, so there's like boxing matches, UFC fights. So there's like pay per view right. things. That's a little more of a direct, like, okay, if they're posting you, that. I can, I, can, I can understand that, obviously. So, like how I watched the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight. Yeah. It was straight up pirated on yeah. YouTube. I'm sure it's what the. YouTube channel I watched it on. I'm sure it's down by now. Yeah, down by now. That's why I checked first thing that morning the after because I knew there would they be some on there. Long, no, they don't last long. <laughs> um, so I can obviously. I mean that that that, that was, right there. That's yeah. easy. You can see the connection there. Yeah. Instead of someone spending seventy five dollars. This watching thing with Instagram, YouTube. man. Is, it, the videos are a minute. I guess they yeah. have like the lot. I don't know, man. But I they're not know. long. I know. There's no, like how is that? There's no. I don't know. There's I no. Don't I don't. Know. I don't get it. I don't get it either. But yeah, I think uh, Eddie Bravo got kicked off. His account got locked. So. I have a hard time listening to that dude. I, I really do, man. <laughs> I re- really do, man. Like, whenever I, I see him. What? On Flat Earth or Jiu Jitsu or what, dude, man? I have. Yeah, once he starts, like, he was on the most recent Fight Companion on JRE. Yeah. And it, as soon as I see his name on there that he's going to be on there, I hesitate to listen to it. Because if he starts going off on some fucking conspiracy theories. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I like a good conspiracy theory, but I, I don't have time to get into it, so yeah. I don't care that much. And so I see his name on there. I'm like, God damn it, man. I don't want to fucking listen to this. So, But then I ended up listening to it, and he was pretty quiet. And like, there was at one point, like, I think it was Brendan Shaw was trying to goad him to, to get him going on it. Right. And he didn't, take the, he didn't take the bait. And so it was actually a pretty good Fight Companion podcast. But sometimes, you, yeah, I just can't listen to that, dude. Just to... Yeah, I can't. There's so much ridiculous shit about fucking flat earth and chemtrails that he'll just buy into and run with it. And I was like, dude, I can't do it, man. Yeah. I just can't can't handle it. Yeah, I don't. It's uh, not my jam. Yeah, I, I listen to Most of the time, man, when I've listened to him, I like listening to him because him and uh, Joe, like, getting some fucking good stories or talking fights. But yeah, if he starts going off down the deep end on. Some of the conspiracy theory shit. It's like, man, we've all heard it before. Okay, you think the earth is flat? You think there's chemtrails? So, we need something new, buddy. Where's the mole people? <laughs> I want some mole people fucking... Lizard people. Conspiracy theory. Mole people. Exactly. So, anyway. Speaking of crazy fuckers, the David Goggins. Yes. Yeah, man. I'm about halfway through. That guy is that the is shit. He bought the book. Gonna read it now. Did you buy the book? Yeah. I think I'm gonna go with the audio book because you know I got a subscription to Audible. So you know, so okay, I, get, yeah. I, get, I get a book every month. Yeah. And you get a credit. Um, yeah. The way he was talking about how he did that audio book, it wasn't just somebody reading it. Like he, yeah, somebody reads like the chapter, mm-hmm. and then he gets in and gives like I don't know. He talks. Yeah. Kind of like almost like a podcast. Yeah. And then you know another. Then he reads the next chapter, another section. Then he gets on and talks. That, that sounds kind of interesting. Like, yeah, oh, that's not interesting. That might be a good audio book too. I think yeah. I'm gonna check that one out like that. So it's that is uh, that's a good idea because it gives you a reason to check out both. Yeah. I, I mean it, but uh, yeah, I just got the book. I bought the book before I started listening to the um, podcast, so I didn't know they had the special audio book. Stuff. Did you you buy and you buy all your books on your Kindle, right? Yeah, yeah I'm just a lazy shit. I'm like, cause I usually wait until <clears throat> I need a book. I don't plan ahead, and I just see what the, where the spirit moves me after I'm done with the book, and uh, then I'm just like, all right, boom, buy it and start reading it. But I've got a few I've got lined up. I'm gonna read. Uh, I got notes from the underground. Um, the oh, what the fuck? Jordan Peterson was talking about it. Sounds the really Dos- Dostoevsky uh, yeah. book. So, anyways, I don't know. I haven't read any of those. How was that? You were reading fucking. Oh, I'm still sl- I'm still slogging through it. <laughs> How's I, that, man? I don't have any great insights. No, ask, no, 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 nothing. No, huh? No. Well, I'm all still, right. s- still slogging through it. Okay, has it gotten to the point where God's dead? No, no. 
But it's not the first time I've read through Nietzsche. You know, Nietzsche. Nietzsche, yeah. I've read... You know, so I'm reading... What the... Morality or whatever. The ge- yeah. Oh, the ge- genealogy of morals or some shit is the one I'm reading right now. Hmm. I've read... I forget the other one I've read through a few years back. So, I like the way the dude thinks. Yeah? He went crazy eventually. Turned into a complete madman. <laughs> but there was a point in... He was probably always sort of a little bit mad, but... He's a pretty smart dude. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I've read any of his stuff. I'm going to check it out next. It's deep. I'm getting to the Russian philosophers. Yep. Got to get through Xenophon's recollections of Socrates. So, it's pretty interesting. It's the whole thing is just basically like telling the Athenians why they fucked up, sentencing them to death. Like, everything you said wasn't true. Here's why. So, it's pretty good. It's fucking Athenians, man. How did you get off of that? I started talking about David Goggins and everything. Oh, yeah, oh Goggins. books. Books. Yeah. Books. So anyways, yes. I got. I know I made Shiloh drive in the car with me and listen to the podcast. So I was like, man, you need more of this dude in your life. Speaking of struggle and embracing the struggle and stuff. I, I love how much of a maniac that dude is. And he knows he's a maniac. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, man, it's good. I, I It triggered, it's funny, it triggered some like old stuff. It's, you know, you, you get older, man, you do, you, you, I don't know how to put it, like, you get a little soft, you forget a little bit, but, like, that used to be me, man, I remember that, when I ran track, I was like, you can't hurt me, motherfucker, that's why I loved it, I was like, dude, the fucking kick is, like, you get to that last hundred meters, and man, you, like, you weren't gonna win, I could just come down hard, like, I wanted that more than you, and you could fucking just crush people's souls with it, and, uh, yeah, I was getting all fired up, man. I'm like, you know, yeah, it's good hey, shit. You, you can't help but get fired up when you listen no. to him. Yeah, he was talking about that. Yeah, like snatching people's souls. Yeah. Dude, I think about that when I'm wrestling, motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes, and, and I think about that on the, the other side, too, when I'm getting my ass whooped. Like, oh, you ain't breaking my soul, No, man. You can keep coming. You can yeah. hit me with the cross face. You can, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You ain't snatching this old motherfucker. Yeah. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep <laughs> fucking fighting. I mean, in, until I'm risking personal injury. But, you know, fucking tap. Let's go again. Yeah. Like, you ain't snatching this old motherfucker. Yeah. And I think about that. Because then I try. You'll see when someone breaks. You'll see it. And you feel it when you fucking, when you snatch their soul for that. Yep. That second when you're wrestling with them. Like, oh. I know, I man. It broke you. It's tough. It is tough. It happens. Yeah. It happens to all of us. It happens to all of us. It but. does. As long as it's for a moment, then you slap hands. Like, that's the thing with me. I don't know. It was just, you, again, like, you just become who you are and you forget. Like, there are just things that, that forge you. So, like, for me, like, like man, like, just taking an ass whooping and just slapping hands and taking another ass whooping and slapping hands. Like, that's just what the fuck you do. It's just what you do. It's just what you do. And, and you can't let it, like... And, you know, we talked about before, like, I'm just stupid enough to think that every time I slap hands with somebody, I should win. Yeah, that's, you should. <laughs> I'm, I'm slightly surprised when I don't. And it, it doesn't matter. Like, even though I know that I shouldn't, but it's like... No, you have to think You have that. to, man. It's like, like, oh, this is the time. Even if it's someone that whoops your ass all the fucking time. Because, yeah. you know, we got a few of those training partners, man, that just take my lunch all the time. And we need them. And I do. I don't care. Like, I slap hands, like, oh, this is the time. I don't care if he just gets done tapping. Yes. I, oh, you slap hands tap, again. Tap, slap hands again. Oh, now is the time, now motherfucker. The time. Oh, shit. Nope. Now is the time, yes. motherfucker. I just hit the reset button. Yeah. You know, like, let's go. Yeah. You, know, that's, you, you have to have that mindset. You have to. You just got to throw it. yourself back into that fire. Yeah, you're going to yeah. get fucked up. I know. I hate yeah. to say it, dude, but you, you, can, I, you, you can tell when you break someone on a long-term basis with that. And it's you, like, you, you can, you know, like when you have a training partner that if you fuck them up too many times for too long yeah, and then you go to wrestle with them again, you can just tell, you can tell. something different. Like, hey dude, <sighs> like all right, reset. Like, all right, you can fuck me up. Yeah. yeah let's go. I know. Yeah, it's, it, you got to retrain them a little oh, bit. Damn, I fucked my toy up. Yeah. <laughs> I got to retrain them a I, little I, bit. I broke my toy. So, yeah, but that's the... That's the thing, man. For me, I try to keep in mind, like, all right, like, I, you know, I may have those moments where I bitch out and I roll away when I should have fucking turned into the pressure, but long term, like, you know, as soon as it's done, like, I'm pissed at myself, we're going to fucking slap hands, we're going to do it again, I'm going to fucking try not to do it again, and it's just, you got to go, but that mentality of just fucking grind, you can't fucking beat me, 
I don't know, dude. Listening to him, you get calm, back so dude. Much shit, and I love how he talks about like callousing the mind. That's he's like, I don't yeah. want to do, I don't want to do this shit. Like, I don't want to fuck. I sit there and look at my running shoes for thirty minutes. Like, God, this fucking sucks. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do. But you know what? I do it. Yep. And that calluses the mind just a little bit. You just you're picking a little pussy scab off your mind, and then when it, when that scar comes, it's a little bit tougher. And I, I do. I think do it. Like, yeah, it gets me jacked, dude. Like, I, I get so pumped when I. Just listen to him talk, because that's how I think about a lot of that shit, man. Like, you know, my fucking alarm goes off at 5.30 in the morning, and I only slept for fucking five hours because I had a long-ass day. Like, you know what? I'm still getting the fuck up. And uh, I'm still going to work out that morning. Yeah. And I, I don't want to. Like, I'm shuffling fucking down the hallway. Like, all right, I need some coffee. I don't want to fucking do this. And I start rationalizing. Like, oh, I, I could just go back to bed or... I'm not going to work out this morning. I, you know, like I, I start having all these fucking oh, yeah. voices start coming in your head. I'm like, no. And I fucking get out in the garage and I start moving. I start doing my shit. You know, go for a run or something. Like, yeah. And you, all, every time you make the proper choice and not the pussy choice, you callous in that mind a little bit. And that's what it is. It's that struggle and callous in the mind. And that dude, that's yeah. such a good feeling. Yeah. He, I just, like hearing him talk about it, dude, just, I get so pumped. I just got to the point where he was talking about Joe's asking him about like, don't you look into the science? You never had a trainer or coach. No. And he's like, I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. You know why? I don't work out. I work out to for my mind. I forget how he put yeah. it. But he's like, it's mental training. It's mental training. I'm not physical training. I'm not trying to make my body look better. I'm trying to make my mind better. And I was like, dude, that is so fucking it. Like that is, it's so hard to explain to people though. Cause like, that's how I look at training for sure. Like yeah. I'm not. You know, I like to look at the science and stuff too. I definitely think there's a, a middle road that we can all. I think if we were all David Goggins, it would may not be. May not good. be good. Yeah, we need we need some outliers like him to show us what's possible. But uh, um, yeah, man, that fucking dude, what was that? What were the callus in the mind, the mental training? Not yeah, the, the mental training. training. Yeah, like your your working out is like it, you you work out to train your mind. Yep. It's not your body. It's like the body's a fucking byproduct. I work out to train my mind. It's like make my mind tougher. Or, you know, especially with jujitsu. It's like, dude, I'm training my fucking mind. I'm in there drilling, doing this shit. I'm working on my mind. Like, the tougher my mind gets, the more fucking hone my mind gets. Like, my body will follow my mind. And if you don't get that mind going, though, you it, the rest of it's just bullshit. 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 Like, you can have and the best training program in the world. Your mind's fucked up. It ain't gonna matter. And you ain't gonna stick to it. No. And see, that, that's where people fail. Like, you know, you'll get some people that think that, oh, you work out all the time because you're so vain, you want to look good. No. Like, I do, dude. Like, working out, especially jiu-jitsu, but also physical training, I do it for my mind. Dude, it keeps me sane. It's that outlet. It toughens my mind. Like, all that shit. Like, I love it. And then, helping me be better at jiu-jitsu is just a byproduct of that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it helps it. I love that. And also... Being healthier and being able to move is a byproduct of that. You know, it's all just kind of like you're, you're, you're training your mind, you're making your mind tougher, stronger, and all these other unintended great consequences of it is, yeah, just, but when you're working out just to look good, it's a short-lived thing. Yeah. It's not, you're, it's not sustainable. You're not no. going to like it. No. Yeah, it's, but when you finally make that switch as to why you're working out, yeah, the, that's how it becomes a lifestyle. That's how it becomes a lifestyle. It is, and that's it. And that's that's something that, like, when he was talking about that, I'm like, oh, that's another way to explain that to people, is because people like, you know, get motivated. They do it for a while to lose weight, then they get out of motivation, and then they stop doing it. Like, you got to reframe why you're doing it, and if you have that mindset, like he is, like, no, man, there's so much shit I do that I don't really want to do. Yeah, I do I, almost on a daily basis. Like, do I want to do 100 fucking push-ups today? No, I don't want to do 100 fucking push-ups today. But, oh, now that I said that, God damn it, now I got to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just I, I'll do that to myself. Like, oh, fuck. And why did I just get into that argument with myself? Because now I got to do it. Because if I get to time to go to bed tonight and I just said that I didn't want to do that, well, I'm, I can't. I'm going to go to lay down in bed and my mind's going to be racing like, you pussy motherfucker. You let yourself talk yourself out of doing that today. God damn it, you gotta get out of bed and fucking do those things. <laughs> you know, that happens. Like, and, and all the other, like, feeling good, looking good, th those are all just good benefits that come, but aren't really the goal. Yeah. Right? I mean, they kind of are a goal, you know what I mean? But, yeah. I That's know. the tough thing, though, man. Like, people wanna. I was thinking about that when he was talking about, like, the rest and recovery thing. Because, you know, it's in, like, I. 
it's not that he doesn't have, you know, rest and recovery, right? Because he has a light he day. T- he talked about it. He talked about that, right? He stretches for two hours a night. Every know? night. And that's, he that's has recovery. light days. Yeah, he, he even said, he's like, oh, light day. I go, my, my pace is a lot slower. I right. still go for my run. Seven but miles. Which again, you know, for most people, seven miles is insane. For a guy like him, seven miles is like a walk oh, around the block. It's That's like a... me going on a fucking forty-five minute walk. Right. You know, right. it's like it, it's it's recovery work, and that's the other thing too is people don't, you know, understand like recovery doesn't happen from rest. But what when I was listening to that, I was thinking, like, you know what? What people are asking is like, how do I fit what I'm currently doing into your program? Yes. Because when they're asking, when do you rest and recover? That's what they're saying. Like, when do you just do nothing? But what do you? When do you do what I do? Right now, because I want to figure out, like, you know, how many days a week do I have to do what you do, and how many days a week can I do what I do? That's exactly what it is. And then that's when he's saying, "Motherfucker, I don't, not, I don't ever do what you do. I don't ever do what you do. Every day is fucking a version of what I do, and that's the only way to make that change. You are not going to be able to live one foot." In doing what you do now and one foot and being better and think that's going to work. No, you got to get both feet and being better and just realize like, dude, every day is a fucking struggle. Every day you got to do something. Every day you got to do something. I mean, it's fucking cliche, but the whole like 1% better. It's like, man, every day, every day, what can you do? And even if it's just five minutes of mobility work, you know, will you be 1% better tomorrow than you would have been if you hadn't done that mobility work? Well, you better fucking do it. And it's just, it's, that's, that's the, the leap, the mental leap that people have the hardest time with because they want to live, man, one foot in both. They want those, you know, again, they say cheat days and it's like, and that's why most, you know, to me and you, we, you know, we have a cheat day and it means something completely different than what other people are asking. Like, well, do you ever have a cheat day? And it's like, no, I never have a day like you. Cause that's what you're asking. Like, when do I get to eat? Like I normally eat. It's like, never motherfucker. You got to leave that behind. So, yeah, people yeah, don't. I loved it when he said that. Yeah. He's like, yeah, rest and recovery. He's like, you know what happens when people ask me that? I block them and I fucking delete them. I'm not trying to hear that shit. Get out of here with that fucking nonsense. Yeah. yeah I loved it. I was like, yes, dude. That is fucking, that is it, dude. I mean, it's a little extreme, but no, that that is it. It's a, it's a mindset. It's a mentality. Yes. It's like, you know, even recovery is like, man, I'm, it's, it's not a passive thing. No. Like, you, you have to fucking take command and steer that ship in a direction every day. You've never earned the right to fucking just wake up, walk your fat ass out to the couch, and lay on the couch all fucking day, not do a goddamn thing, and then go to bed again at night. No. It doesn't exist. doesn't exist. It doesn't fucking exist. It, just, it shouldn't exist. If it does, you need to fix it. Like, to me, that is just mind-numbing. Like, I just... I can't wrap my mind around that. Like, what? Yeah. What are you telling me right we're now? We're not wired for that, man. No, we're not wired for that. You need to move. You need to do something. Yeah. It doesn't... You, you know you don't have to run a marathon every goddamn day. No. You know? And you don't... Your light day isn't... That's be... not... Yeah. I mean, most people would say that that's... They, they, they're not happy doing that anyways. It's like they think they are. It's like, no, there's a difference between what's easy and what makes you happy. Big fucking difference. Like, you know, what's easy is sitting on the couch all day, drinking beer, watching football on Sundays. You know, what makes me happy is going to get my ass whooped on Sunday afternoons when the boys from Montrose come down and everybody's there and we're just fucking going at each other like a bunch of savages. And dude, I have, it's, that's, that's what makes me fucking happy. And, but people mistake that, man. They think like, well, what's easy is what's going to make me happy. And it's not. The struggle is going to make you happy. The struggle will make you happier. Yeah. And also knowing that, like, dude, happiness, it's not, uh, there, there's no permanent happiness. Like, you're it's never... It's a very fleeting feeling, dude. It's like sand in your hand. Yes. Is, you, you experience it, and then it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And, yeah. and again, we're, like, biologically wired that way. Like, if, you, you, uh, you know, he had the example in the, in the, the social leap of, you know, if you had two cavemen and... One goes out, he leads a hunting party and kills a mammoth, and he's happy. He's permanently happy. I mean, he's happy, like he's done, you know, he doesn't feel motivated to go out and hunt another mammoth. You know, he's happy. And you got the other dude, he goes out, he does it, and he's happy for like a day or two, but then, you know, man, I just, yeah, 
through my hands like sand. Like, I need something else to make me happy again, you know? He's going to go hunt another mammoth. Now, which one of these two motherfuckers is more useful to the group? Right? Like, so whose genes was more likely to get passed on? It's like the dude who's never happy. Like, the guy who's he's using happiness as a, 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 as a compass to make sure that he's, his struggle is moving in a positive direction. Like, that's what happiness is. It's just, it's just letting you know, is my struggle going in a positive direction? I'm going to struggle. Every day is going to be a fucking struggle. I can't get away from it. And, you know, I can deny it, but it's there. It's either going in a positive or negative direction. And that's all happiness is. You're never going to achieve it and be like, yes, I'm happy permanently. Yeah. I even feel weird having that conversation, like calling it happiness. You know, to me, it'd be more like, I mean, there's definitely certain things that make you happy, but that's very fleeting. And I, I think like that lifestyle choice or living that way and pursuing those things on a daily basis, it's more like, I, I can't even put the right word to it, man, like a satisfaction. It's not contentment. You know, you're not, you might be content. Content's kind of like happy, like it's fleeting. You're content for the moment. But then that goes away. Maybe it's more like a satisfaction doesn't quite do it either. You know, like, I don't know, like a struggle. Like, my mind is not, I don't like using the word happy for that. Right. Like, I, I, no, that's not. It's just like the day, like the day. It doesn't day seem fitting. Like, it yeah. seems. Happiness is more of like, so there are goals. There are like long term, there are monument, there are things, right? Like, you know, having the birth of a child. Right. You know what I mean? That, but that, that, that doesn't that happen every day. No. So like, you know, that's the thing, like happiness and, and whatnot, it's, it's, it is relative. Like for me, I think I know what you're talking about. For me, it's just kind of a positive neutral. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm, I'm neutral, right? Like I'm not going to feel fucking great about myself. Uh, and I may not feel super shitty about myself like I would if I just like drank a fucking 24 pack of Budweiser for some stupid reason. <laughs> Right? So most of the time, like, I'm kind of like positive neutral or negative neutral, you know? And I, I feel like doing my daily shit just kind of helps keep me pointed in that, that positive neutral direction, you know? I don't, I just. Uh, positive neutral, like, and it's almost like a, I think, I think a better word would be like a sense of pride. Yeah. In your, in your life. You're taking somewhat control of your life and leading it in a positive direction. You're, yeah. trying, you're always trying to steer the ship a little yeah. bit away from the iceberg. Yeah. You know, in the end, you're going to hit the iceberg and it's I, over. Yeah, a little sense of pride. A little sense of pride, just, but you're trying yeah. to just, just skirt the edge of that iceberg as long as you can until Father Time says it's... Yeah. You can't steer around the iceberg anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's something that's... Uh, yeah, that's just... That's a little bit different thing. than, But, I mean, but those things, you know, I've definitely had some... Moments that have made me happy with jujitsu, for sure. So it's uh, so you know th that's the thing is like you, the daily struggle is what cultivates that, and like I said, that's how you know you're heading in a positive direction. If you don't feel happy, you're struggling and you're just miserable. It's probably a good sign that your struggle is just going in the wrong direction. You're probably sitting in a cubicle working a job you hate for shit you don't need, or some version of that. And it's like, dude, you're struggling. It's bad direction. That's why you're unhappy. Like, well, you're struggling because you really don't have a struggle. Yeah. Like, like, you wake up, yeah. you, go, you go, you, does that well, make sense? The lack of a struggle is a struggle. The lack of a struggle is a struggle. You're not getting away from it. From, you right. can deny it. You can run away from it. But it is always going to find you. Yep. So it's like you have to accept it. And, and it's like, yeah, is it positive or negative? And like I said, I think that's just all like, you know, the, the Pride, satisfaction, happiness, you know, if it's a continuum of, of positive feelings that you can achieve from what you're doing with your life. And I think those are just to let you know you're, you know, okay, I'm, I'm moving all right. You know, I'm feeling bad is, maybe I'm not doing the right thing here. So, but uh, yeah, it's an, important that people understand that. And it's just not I think, part of what they're taught. Yeah, that, that yeah, like, uh, this, that was probably, I mean, I knew who David Go <coughs> Goggins was from his different uh, interviews and shit. I always knew he was a madman, but that was probably the biggest thing I got from that. I was like, yes, like, that is, that is a lesson that everybody needs to get in that. You know, we talk about being healthy, you know, eating healthy, training healthy, taking care of your body, taking care of your relationships, all that shit, like, it's just, it's a lifestyle choice and understanding why you're doing certain things. Just he just hit it right on the head. He's like, I don't want to do this shit, motherfucker. 
I'm suffering. This sucks. Yeah. But it's, it's I'm all, he, I think it was, man, maybe it was him or Joe Cena, but he's like, I'm always taking care of my future self. You know, we've talked about that. Yeah. What's your future self going to say about this? Yeah. Are you creating fucking problems for your future self? Or are you taking care? Are you looking out for your future, future <laughs> self? And I, yeah, maybe it was Goggins. Like I see, I'm getting these interviews mixed up now. But Joe Cena, he's kind of the same guy. He's same type of guy. He's a fucking madman. He's like, yeah, I'm always taking care of my, my future self. That way I don't have to, you know, I'm not, I'm not writing a check that my future self can't cash. Yeah. Or that I don't want to cash. You know, it's yeah, yeah, that's important. Super yeah. important. Yeah, man. It, it, it's thing that people look at like guys like you and me, and they think that it's easy. You know, it's like, not oh, fucking easy. Oh, man. they love to work out. They want to do that shit, and or they've always been like that. And it's like, fuck, no, man. If you had any idea, and you know, like I said we we've talked about before. Like sometimes we take it for granted. It's like you doing jujitsu for twelve years. It's hard to remember exactly what it was like to be a white belt. Like, dude, I've been working out for so fucking long. That's why I said like I'm getting fired up listening to Goggins because it's like it's bringing some things like to the surface that were just kind of they're baked into me at this point. Like I take them for granted, and I remember like, oh yeah, like there were moments that you know forged in fucking fire where. You know, that made me who I am today. And, like, that's that's what I want to fucking get. You know, like, Shiloh and Z. And I want them to be able to, you know, going back to just, like, you know, how do you get your kids to experience shit like that so that they know that, yeah, man, you can't hurt me. If you got that fucking attitude, like, it's amazing where you can go with that attitude. Because, dude, you can't, you can't fucking, you know, the heart just... You know, people can have all the talent in the world, and man, you can you can develop heart. Like, you can definitely, you know, you get it. But th- I think that's that mental, the, the mental callous, yeah, that mental man. callousing. Like, it's, yeah, that's so important. Yeah, that's you know that fucking heart that you get from that. Like, man, you can't fucking hurt me. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. This shit you, <laughs> know. Called, you know, it's funny. I'm such an idiot. Like, I listened to that, and then I think it was like the next morning. I woke up. And I looked at the weather, and it was like 11 degrees outside, dude. It was fucking cold. And so I looked at that, and I was like, fuck. All right, I got to go walk my dog. Because that's usually like my routine. Like, okay, I got to take my dog for a walk. Like, I check the weather, like how, like how, because I just want to know how warm I need to dress. Yeah. You know, so, oh, what's the weather like real quick? Ooh, fucking 11 degrees, a little chilly. So then I start thinking, fuck, do I really, does he need to walk? <laughs> And as soon as that, like I had just listened to David Goggins, as soon as that question came into my head, it's like, you pussy motherfucker. So not only did I walk him, I walked my dog, he's only, he, he's old and he's only used his three legs, it's a long story. So then I brought him home and I went for a fucking run. I was like, that's it. And I, I'm not a big fan of running. I was like, you fucking pussy bitch. You were trying to get out of just a simple fucking walk with your dog because it's chilly out. I was like, no, and now you're going to go fucking running. And now you're not wearing fucking gloves because your hands are going to get cold. And you're not listening to fucking music because that's fucking cheating. You're going to go fucking run in the cold, you pussy motherfucker. Because you had, you, I just, I let that voice came in, like, finding reasons why I shouldn't do it. And trying to find, okay, well, I can do this. I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. So I had to fucking squash that pussy fucking voice and get it done. Good, man. Yeah. Good. It's important. It is. Callous that mind. Got to callous the mind, man. Yeah. Go over that fucking pile of rocks. Nobody wants to be in the corner. <laughs> Just fucking start working on it. That's yeah, right. man. I know. It was great, dude. It's funny. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, what's up, Waka? He just got back from the walk. the podcast, so. Mutt. Yes. What's up, buddy? You got to go out for a walk while we were in here. But yeah, man, it's, it's uh, you know, coaching her with track. I remember telling her, I was like, man, everybody, you're going to hurt. You're going to hurt at the end of the sprint, but you're going to hurt less if, like, you know, you don't want to just survive it, like dominate it, and and you'll feel better for it. And uh, and yeah, so it's funny just listening to him. You know, basically saying the same shit. Like, man, you can't just survive the suck. It sucks for everybody. Everybody's trying to survive this. Like that's bullshit. Like, you got to embrace it. You got to fucking thrive in the suck. And yeah, that's the that's the good shit, man. It is. That's dude. the good shit. It's so much fun. It is. So. Not fun at the time. No. No, no, no. It's not but fun at the time. It isn't. But it's like leveling up your character. It is. You can't do it, man. You're not going to get to that boss battle if you don't fight anybody along the I way. Know. Man, I've, I ran into this boss on God of War that's just been fucking killing me. 
I, I gotta have to go level up my character. I've been going around doing all these other little side missions and shit, trying to get a yeah. better axe and better armor. I'm gonna yeah. fuck that dude up tonight. There you go, dude. I had to nice. level, level up my character. <laughs> I know I've been doing that with my guy. I know I've got some final battles on Far Cry Primal coming up, <laughs> so I've been going around just fucking people up. I just love how I can unleash my animal horde on people. Like, I've just taken out entire camps of people with my owl and fucking <laughs> An <owl>? jaguar. <laughs> yeah, dude. So the owl's like a drone. So you're like a beast master? You yeah, control these fucking things? Exactly, the beast master. That is Remember awesome. that old Oh, fuck yeah, fuck dude. yeah, dude. So yeah, you control them and you can... You're not like seeing through the eyes of the owl, but you're basically seeing the owl. You can fucking see through the owl and the owl will fucking fly around. And so you can... Uh, fly around and it'll you know see and you can tag all the enemies in an area and so you can um you know see what they are and then he can drop bombs and you've got different bombs and so i've got like a fucking a bee bomb you drop it and it fucking like everyone around it just gets in swarmed by bees and kills them i got a fire bomb and i got a it's called a berserker bomb and you drop it and it makes the people go crazy and they just start attacking everyone around them. So I'll fly around and I'll find like the strongest dude and I'll drop a berserk bomb. And then he's going crazy in the camp and everyone's running. And then I'm flying around and guys on the edge, um, I'll, I'll tag them for my uh, jaguar to attack. Because the jaguar won't alert other people around. If he attacks them, my saber tooth will. I like my blood saber tooth the best. But so the jaguar is picking dudes off <laughs> on this corner. The owls flying around, dropping fucking bombs on people and, and tagging new people. The, the berserk dude's just fucking going crazy, clubbing everyone. I'm just sitting on the <laughs> edge of the whole scene, just watching, orchestrating the, orchestrate madness. the madness, man. And yeah, it's uh, it was funny. There was literally one. It was up on a cliff, and I couldn't figure out how to get to it. Later I figured it out, so I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to use my owl. And I literally just took out the whole fucking thing and claimed the camp. And uh, It's crazy how deep these video games are. Yeah. You know, they, that's not how they were when we were kids. You know, like, I ran into this boss, and these dudes are just killing me, man. There's like three of them. And like, there's one guy, dude, if he hits you once, you're dead. Yeah. Now you can have a full energy bar, doesn't matter. If this motherfucker hits you with his sledgehammer, you are dead. So I'm like, fuck. I, kept, I thought I could beat him, thought I could beat him wasn't working but then the, the game's so deep so then you just get away from that and you just start exploring all around and then you wanted other dudes to fight and then you level and like dude there's so many layers to these fucking games nowadays dude it's insane yeah it's completely insane I know they, it was... they just get, and then you get you get like lost in them they literally lost like where am I at like what am I and then you kind of get like okay what am I trying to do now right. <laughs> like shit I gotta reassess what the fuck's going on here it's funny, man, how deep those games are. It's not just like cool. Super Super Mario. Yeah, Brothers. I was about to say, man, it's come a long way from it's Super Mario. Long Brothers. fucking ways from Super yeah, Mario. So we were playing the original Final Fantasy. That was fucking. That was like one of the uh, first role playing games where you had to run around. You had to make your. Well, party. Zelda was kind of like that. Zelda was the first one that had a battery backup. The uh, this one was before that. No, the. Dude, it was Dragon Master or something like that. Yeah, I remember that one, dude. That one was like super old school. I just remember running around these fucking, you know, the forest. And then <laughs> and you, you'd see your dude on one side and the fucking enemy on the other. And the fucking music's playing. The little thing comes up. What do you want to do? Attack? Magic? Oh, yeah. Run? Oh, yeah. You know, and you got to select something for all of your party, and then it's like, do-do-do, plays out, and you do it again, and Dude, all those... you used to think those shit was so cool. Oh, man, hell yeah. And then now, we're, now the video games we play... Yeah, it was kind of the same like, shit, dude. You had to wander around. Like, you, you, if you just try to go to the boss or whatever, it's like, no, you got to go do all these dungeons and all this shit. And, but, man, it taught you. Like, damn, people love the fucking bag on video games, but I think... Fucking video games are great, man. Especially like old school ones that they were hard. They taught you tenacity, you know. And now people just play Minecraft. It's like, wait a minute, you mine stuff to craft with and craft stuff to mine with. It's fucking sounds interesting. I, I need more death and destruction in my video games. Yeah, I really like violence. A little violence, a little, com little competitiveness, a little the aggression. Fact, the violence in the video games yes. is the shit, dude. <laughs> 
It's wired into us. It is. We, we need to take that's it That's why I like that guy, that guy that wore on that fucking axe that he has. Oh, yeah. So much fun, dude. I know. Yeah, that's a, uh, that is a good one. So, so yeah. Primal. So, that is fucking good. So, speaking of uh, primal shit, I got Masters 3. No gi. Yeah, oh, that's been the big, the big change from last week's yeah. conversation. Last week, you had came to terms with you were going to go fight all the young bucks. I was going to enter the adults. The I adult, thought that was... I that just, was the move. I thought that was the move. It was, it was the move I had decided on before I knew that I had another option. But our so, coach has steered you in the right direction. And yeah, so his corrected my thought process so now so. you're going to master was it master three yep master same three. weight same weight, same weight. i'm gonna do the middle weight 175 so i'm like a solid 167 168 right now can't really seem to go up or down from there woke up one morning i was 169 <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna try and bulk up but uh so yeah no yeah, was, i think you're a decent size for that weight class yeah, yeah you're not gonna be terribly small you know, being that it's same day weigh ins, I mean, right. literally, everybody's weighing in 10 minutes before they get on the mat. Yeah. So if anybody is cutting a lot of weight, they are depleted. You yeah. know what I mean? So you're going to go in healthy, fed, fuel, you know, yeah, I'm hyd- 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 hydrated, everything. You know what I mean? So yeah. You're, you're right there. Yeah. You know? I don't feel I'm going to give it's up. Not, yeah, you're not a giving whole up. Lot, mm-hmm. So and I'd, I'd feel a lot better if I try to get down to 162. I just think I'd feel depleted. So. I mean, I'm stressed out because it's like, dude, am I going to weigh what I need to weigh on that day? Or just am I gonna another stress to... you don't need to worry about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to go out there and I think there's like seven guys in the division, which is interesting, right? Because you're supposed to have, uh, you're supposed to have your initial matches on Friday and then the medal rounds on Saturday, which just doesn't seem to make sense. Oh, is that how, the, is that how it's doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Kiele's division literally has three people. It's like, how are they going to do that? Like, so I think they probably are going to have to like make a call based, like they, they plan it that way in case the divisions it's a big ass division. get big enough for that. But if it's a small division, you see, they should just do it in one dude, day. It's three matches. Three matches. Yeah. Right? Se- seven people. It's like three matches to win. You're, you know, three matches you're in the gold or yeah, three matches of the gold medal match. So, but if they stick to that, it would you would have to do two I'd have matches, one match, one match, and then you would do your. I'd have yeah, and then, and then two the next day if I won. No, you would do one. You would do two the first day, and that would put you into the finals, and then you would. So it's the do, finals, not the medal rounds. Well, you got to remember they don't fight for two third, two third at IBJJF. IBJJF. Right, right, right. So right. you, so do you consider the third place match like a medal match, like a medal round? <sighs> I don't know how they would word that. Yeah. I don't know how they're it's stupid. Oh. Small small division. They just need to. I hope that's what they're gonna do. Do it all one day. Yeah, because my plan is to leave on Saturday. So if we have to show up for a match or two and then leave after that, but uh, yeah, we're gonna. You guys driving? Flying? Yeah, flying. yeah. We're gonna take the family and do a little vacation. Get the National fun. Lampoons. Hopefully better Vacation. than that. But yeah, we're going to Vegas and on your way to Wally World. World. We are, dude. We're literally stopping in Vegas and we're going to Anaheim. Are so, you? Yeah. So yeah, going, we, we're going to Wally World. Yeah, we're not going to Disneyland. I just can't bring myself to it. It's just I'm not a Disneyland kind of guy, dude. It's so super expensive. expensive nowadays. For just, one day, the tickets from for me and the family was going to be almost six hundred dollars. What? For just for four day, of you? for four people, just the tickets, bro. Just to get into the park. Just to get into the park. Six hundred dollars? Almost. It was, it was over five hundred. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. I, it's a lot of money. And wow. then you get in and of course like everything costs an yeah. arm and a leg. Oh, yeah. And so it's not normal get, prices. No, no food, you're you know. talking like a thousand dollars to take a family there for a day. Dude. And it's like and and in and then it's like you're in Disneyland. And so, like, I have trouble dealing with the normals as is. It's why I live in a fucking small town in western Colorado. And, like, wandering around Disneyland, having to stand in lines. Like, dude, that just goes against everything in my fucking soul. So, I just can't do it. Um, so, yeah, we decided we we're going to forego Disneyland and we we're going to go to Vegas and just fucking hang out there for a couple days. And... 
Lucas is always interesting. It is fun, you know. I'm gonna take some of the money we would have spent to Disneyland and just have some have, fun, have some fun, some man. Food. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's things there that we that we're, you know, I don't know what the word is. We're we're uh, we're conscious. We're not. I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Like I just don't. I don't think about spending money, right? It's not like I I, I consciously, you know, don't. I just don't think about it. And so you know, like I walk around Vegas. And I just don't really see, I, like I know they're there on the periphery, but like I don't really see all these opportunities to spend my money. Because it's not interesting to yeah, you. Yeah, it's, it's just it's, not, It's not know, entertaining, it's yeah, not interesting. it's just not what I wanted. Well, then I just, it's not, you know, I know that that's how you end up with no money too, you know? So, but there's definitely some things. So now it's like, okay, hey, we got a few hundred bucks. Like, let's go to that big giant arcade thing that we always yeah. see that, we, you know, we... We know it's going to end up costing us like $200, so we just don't go there. Because, like, but, okay, well, let's go there. So, yeah, we're going to have some fun with the kids. and They'll dig it. Yeah, they'll dig it. But, uh, Has yeah. you know one of your kids ever seen Vegas? Oh, yeah, we've been to Vegas. Oh, they, they, they've seen it? I didn't, yeah. know, I didn't know if they'd seen all the huge-ass buildings. And the huge buildings and the weird people. And people and and the, yeah, the, 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 the freaking um, little people slapping their cards. Oh, yeah. Trying to give you the freaking... You know, here call this girl. <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? It's so ridiculous. But uh, yeah, we're gonna. Oh, Snakey's trying to. Snakey's jacket. He's trying to get out of there. He, you can't tell, but every time you come, he's like trying to get out of the cage. Trying to find a hole in that lid. It's like Jake the Snake says, man. Snakes can tell. They find the one person in the room who's so, afraid of him. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Me and Snakey having that relationship. Yeah, I don't think Snakey's going to get you, man. He can know I don't like him. No, for sure. So, dude, I was watching something the other night on uh, um, the King Cobra. And, like, dude, those things are fucking, like, super vicious, brutal, like, crazy-ass snakes. And then it, like, it just made me think about Jake's story about sicking one on Macho Man. <laughs> and how Macho Man had pissed him off beforehand, so he fucking slapped it around and made it real mad and <laughs> chewed on him. You know, there were so many crazy things about those stories. The fact that he had zero education on like snake handling, and they would just give him a new snake like every ten days because he couldn't handle the travel. How many stories involve losing, losing the snake? snake. <laughs> lose the snake. It's so fucking bananas, dude. In somebody's house or a foreign country or. You just lose it. Yeah, well, here's another one, dude. What was the story? Who? What wrestler was it that made him, uh, made the snake bite him? So he knew that was it was Macho Man. Was it, Ma- was it Macho yeah, Man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was, he knew that he was oh, going to bite right. him in the ring. That's right. And so he was like, oh, he came in locker room ahead of time. Not poisonous, and so he wanted him to bite you first. <laughs> It's so great. And that's why he was like, man, I was pissed at him. That's why, like, I got that snake riled that, up. That is so great. Slapped the fuck out of him. But yeah, dude, those things are. Uh, like brutal like their fucking teeth and they're chewing like I was watching and they're like showing it like fucking biting like eating another snake and I was just thinking of Macho Man's arm and <laughs> that thing I was like dude that is just wild stuff man like it's good shit WWF I don't care what anyone fucking says World Wildlife Fund can eat a dick is that why they ended up changing the name? oh yeah 100% was it? It was WWF the whole time I was a kid. Yep. No, World Wildlife Fund said it infringed on their WWF uh, right. So Psh, Whatever. Dude, I saw a fucking uh, a shirt the other day that said WWF, and it had two pandas like wrestling, like one DDT and the other. <laughs> that is awesome. Like, yeah. yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> it is. But it was funny. I noticed like Jake the Snake says WWE. Like even when he was referring to the like the old days when it was the WWF. when it was the WWF. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. It's just like he, yeah, legally just yeah. having a relationship with them. Like he's just, they all have. It's like it's kind of sad, man. I was, no, dude, when I was a kid, that was it. It was, was WWF. Like WWF, man. That's how I even still picture it in my head. Yeah, because I I stopped watching it before it. You know, I've never watched like the. WWE or whatever all the other fucking acronyms were, man. I don't. I never got into them. Like yeah. I watched the WWF as a kid, man. The Iron yep. Sheik and Jimmy Superfly Snooker and the Junkyard Dog. I mean, those guys are the jam. Fuck yeah, yeah, man. But once it got away from all that, I just kind of stopped watching it. Yeah. So, anyways, but uh, yeah, we're going back to Masters World. Fuck Before yeah. Fuck out there. Some Nogi Worlds. See some Nogi, man. Yeah, Nogi's fun. Mm-hmm. 
having uh, feeling good with it. You know, Part of me feels like a little bit of a pussy for not going and competing. Yeah, probably are, but. <laughs> I haven't been training enough, man. I what really, do you mean? I, I really just... I haven't, I haven't been working my fucking ass off. What? I've been putting a lot of hours at work, man. I haven't been training enough. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, what What would you do different? I mean, how much would you... Train like, more? Yeah. I guess, but you've been training as much as you can. I train as much as I can all the time. Yeah. But there's... I, yeah, I just I don't feel prepared. Hmm. I feel as if I would just be donating my money to the IBJJF. Well, I mean, I maybe what I'm ass, doing get too. Get my ass whooped and just yeah. give my money away. Yeah. Well, I made Kevin pay for my entry, so he gave him. See, he doesn't offer that shit to me, so fuck him. <laughs> fuck you, Kevin. I think he, he. Uh, Whatever, Kevin. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure he would. My feelings hurt, so it don't matter. Damage is done now. <laughs> Damage is done. No, it was. Uh, yeah, so he talked me into it. He's like, "I'll pay your." Well, it was funny. He told me I'll pay your entry fee, and I got a room to stay in. So all I got to do is get out there. And he told me that he was staying there from Wednesday to Monday. So we looked up a ticket and it was only 250 round trip. So I was like, okay, cool. $250 plane ticket. Got a room to stay in. He's going to pay my entry fee. I'm going to fight in the open division. You know, 165 pound weight class. Yeah, everything's fucking great. That's exactly what I was ever going to do. And, you know, we know the saga with the other shit. But, uh... So yeah, but it uh, um, turns out that he wasn't going on Wednesday. He's going on Thursday. Saying there Thursday to Friday. Well, the plane ticket for Thursday to Friday is about four hundred some odd dollars. And then um, he's telling me he's like, yeah, yeah, we got about five of us in the room. He starts listing them off, and you, and I'm like number seven or eight on the list. I'm like, oh my god! Wait, how is this gonna work? I, I mean, you know, it, we, I've been in situations where we made it work, but it was like in my twenties. Yeah, and, I'm too old for that shit now. So yeah, I need a fucking bed. I need a bed by myself, especially if I'm gonna like have any, you know, yeah. want to like compete well, like yep. get a little sleep or whatever. Yeah, I, I, I used to do that shit all the time back when I was first starting jujitsu. Yeah, fucking as many as we could in the room. Just people sleeping all over. Or two to a bed. Yeah, someone fuck, in the closet. Yeah, fuck all that. Yeah, so. You know, I mean, I, I just, I, I, and it was funny, I kind of, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a moment where I saw him listing it <laughs> off, and I saw the look on his face change a little bit, and I think he started to realize, like, oh, I've been offering this room Too many people. to a bunch of people, and they all said yes, so now I've got like seven or eight dudes staying in this room. Um, so anyways, it uh, it worked out, because I talked Kiele and the coming and entering and so the Hawaiian Hurricane is going to make her Nogi World's debut yeah. see I didn't last well. time I talked to you guys I didn't know she was competing yeah yeah, yeah. so she's all signed up oh, yeah. Masters 2 going to do the middleweight as well she's right kind of in the same predicament where you know she's a few pounds away but it's enough where you know yeah, she's I gotta so lose goddamn it by lean now. that's yeah. a problem with both me and her it's like what are, you know we're just so lean what are you gonna do yeah the only way the two of you are losing weight at this point I mean it would either have to be over a long time scale or dehydration yeah yeah there's no right you know what I mean it's yeah and dehydration is not a good like, yeah, not a healthy choice me, so. I yeah so anyways yeah we're just gonna go out there and have some fun have huh? some fun and get after it but uh yeah man I've been working on my guillotines and oh yeah my next feeling it yeah, I know, man. I apologize ahead of time. Oh, yeah, you drill double legs for 20 minutes and then guillotine for fucking 10 minutes. It's fucking no gi. What else is there, man? <laughs> double legs and guillotines. I mean, it's either that or leg locks, and I've drilled that enough yeah. to fucking have it. So, but uh, yeah, man, feeling pretty good. Appreciate all the help today with the takedown stuff. Probably just going to go out there and sit on my ass, but it's all, right. it's all right. At least I got a plan A, finally. If you're comfortable with it. Yeah. I couldn't legitimately say that I had a plan A for Nogi as far as like, okay, this is my my takedown. Like, I technically know how to do a double leg and single leg and all that shit, but if you're like, all right, James, you got to go out there and hit a fucking takedown. Like, Man, I don't know that I got a real fucking strategy there, coach. <laughs> <laughs> so... But now I feel a little bit better with it, so it was funny. Was, I think Kevin, he, you know, he didn't want to show up. I think he was a little proud when he came in and I was drilling, drilling, fucking, drilling a takedown, yeah, without any encouragement. So, 
it uh, warms his heart a little bit, I think. So, anyways, yeah, ready to go out there and have fun. But yeah, no, I, like I was telling you, it was. It was in, I, I realized I was just applying like the wrong mindset to the whole thing. Like the so I'm probably being a little disrespectful to the process. What do you mean by that exactly? Well, you know, like, uh, just, I guess on some level, like, I haven't even won, like, Masters 3 uh, no-gi. You know what I mean? So it's like, well, if I'm saying I want to compete and blah, 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 well, it's like, I'm kind of like being a little disrespectful to my fellow Masters 3 competitors by saying, like, well, you guys don't provide me a fucking challenge when I haven't even gone out there and, like, you tested, yourself tested against myself them. against them. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be one thing if I'd gone out and won it for the last two years or some stupid shit like that, and, and I was like, you know, I just kind of want to test myself against some different competition, and even there, I could probably enter Masters 1 or something like that. So, you know, on some level, it's like, hey, you know, Pimenta's entering Masters 1. Like, you know, who the fuck am I? So... You know, I just realized, like, I was applying a different mindset to the situation, which wasn't wrong, but it was just the wrong mindset for the situation. Like, like I realized what was happening. Like, my track coach, he's the one that always told us, like, dude, you don't hide in a situation where you can do well. You go out in a situation where people question whether you should even be there, and you fucking prove to them you belong. And when you do that, like your your performance is going to be so much better than if you're constantly protecting yourself in situations where you can do well. And so that was like, you know, in track that's, you know, I, I realized like that mindset for that situation made sense. And there's something to that. You don't want to like totally throw that out, but trying to force that mentality onto this situation uh, just... Doesn't quite apply straight across. Yeah, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same situation. So I just kind of needed to reassess how I was looking at it. But like I said, just everyone I talked to had pretty much the same reaction. And us being social creatures, we start to pick up on these things. Like, wait a minute. Am I looking at this wrong? Because everyone has had the same reaction when I tell them that. Which is like, why aren't you just doing Masters 3? Well, this doesn't make any sense. You know, you should just do Masters 3. And so, I was like, well, everyone can't be wrong. I can see Rob being wrong. And Kevin. But, you know. <laughs> it happens once in a while. Yeah. You know, anyways. But, uh, so yeah. No, it was good. I feel feel good about it. I just, did. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I still, um, I, you know, hey, let's say Masters still exists for the reasons that I said last week. Like, I don't necessarily think on a philosophical level any differently. It's just. You know, how am I going to apply that knowledge to the situation? I realized, like, man, you're just being, you're not applying it the right way. So just fucking go fight Masters 3 and have fun. And there you go. So. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So there you go. That's how I justified my change of direction That's without. I'm glad, I'm glad you made that shift. I mean, because I, I totally could see where you're coming from, you know, either way. It's. Yeah, I mean, it's. But it's like we talked about earlier in this podcast, you know, anytime you slap hands with somebody, you expect to win. And like when you sign up for the adult division, you know, there's part of you that knows like, you know, yeah, I expect to win, but the odds of me winning are pretty fucking low. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there's going to be some gorillas. Yeah. There's going to, there's very well could be some fucking D1 wrestler. Some twenty-two-year-old kid fresh out of college. Yeah, it's just gonna be a motherfucker, and you know that. I mean, it just it happens. Yeah, and and if you lose to him, it's less steam than it is if you lose to some other dude with gray in his beard. You right, know what right. I mean? Somebody it, like think like, yeah, yeah, someone that you think you should be. If yeah. you you look at some dude and he's just jacked and he's really good and it's super athletic, like oh yeah, this guy was supposed to beat me and you beat me. Yeah, it's 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 easier on the, the ego or the pride and losing yeah. to somebody you you think you should win to like it's it's more stressful you know because then you do you put more expectations on yourself and it's just you get into this fucking mental battle you know what I mean right it's right just, right yeah that's a fine line it between is. the two it so is. and I, it just it was it was it, there was a lot of factors at play like I said it was just the primary one was just that's what I had thought I yeah, was yeah because you didn't know there was masters I at didn't first. know there was masters so that's what I thought I was doing and I had just made up my mind to do that so I felt like I was 
changing my mind. So it took a little shift. By going to Masters 3, and that's why I was like, well, why would I, why would I go to Masters 3? That's just making things easier on me. I've already decided to do this. Like, why would you want to do that? And so, I just took a little mental shift for me to realize, like, all right, I'm just... Good. A little course yeah. correction. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. So, I'm, uh, you know... Ah, you'll be fine, man. Nah, yeah. It'll be fine, man. Because there's always more challenges, like you said. If it, you know, even if it was, say, you were had been to Nogi Worlds the past two years and you mopped up everybody in Masters three, guess what? It's time for the brown belt. Right, right. <laughs> no, that was funny when you said that. I was like, no, that's not yeah, the solution. If, 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 that, if that was the case, that you were just mopping up every purple belt you came across, you know, Kevin would have been like, oh, okay, you want a new challenge? Yeah. Here's your brown belt. Yep. Have fun with that. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, so exactly. There, there's, yeah, the challenges are built in. The challenges are built in. So I just need to, you know, work within the, the system that I have uh, decided to work within. And so, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be good. There cool. Go. That's, That's it, good, man. man. So. Well, while you're out there fucking dudes up, I'm going to go see my uh, brother. Next weekend? Yeah, next, yeah, oh, cool. next weekend. I'm leaving Thursday. He, him and his wife just had a new, new little baby. All right so on. I'm, I'm an uncle again. And my mom is actually flying out from Michigan to go see... His brother in Texas? Yeah. Cool. So we're going to meet up in Texas. Unfortunately, my dad can't go this time, but... Yeah. So they said I'll get to, I haven't seen my mom in a while or my brother and his family, so... Okay. It'd be nice, man. I'll go hang out for just a kind of long weekend. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, back home on Sunday. Right on. We'll let Angela run, grumpy guy. That's how I, was, I was talking to her about that today. I was like, hey, how do you feel about teaching Grumpy Guy next to you? I was like, we haven't canceled the Grumpy Guy. She flaps her jaws about it enough. She's like, oh, you guys can be gone. Me and Kelly will take over. But it's always like her and Kelly. It's never quite her. So, But the happy gal takeover, they're always talking trash. So Time to step up. Trying to step up. That's right. No more free ride, ladies. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, because I... I finally found out like this week that I got Thursday off next week, so I've kind of been solidifying the plans. Yeah. And when I thought about that, I was like, "Oh, okay." And I knew you were going to be gone from Masters Worlds or Nogi Worlds, and I didn't know Kelly was going. So I was like, "Oh, you know, Kelly will probably teach." Yeah. You know, grumpy guy. But then I found out today Kelly was going. I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "Come, oh, we gotta come up." With yeah, because I didn't know you were going yeah. next week. Yeah. I thought you would be around to coach. Yeah. So I didn't think anything of it. Yeah, so we got to come up with a plan. Yeah, well, we'll get it figured out. So. Yeah, so when you guys are listening to this next week, come the fucking Saturday class because somebody will be there to coach Grumpy Guy Fit. So I'll be wrestling and Rob will be relaxing. Hey, and the fan. The, yeah, finding ways to continue to punish himself. Oh, yeah, I will. So. I'm sure. <laughs> well, good, man. It'll be fun. That's it, man. I don't have any other words of wisdom. No, I, I don't feel we talked enough shit about Adam today, but it's okay. I know. See, that's the problem. We make a goal to do something. It doesn't work. So we came into this one. This is going to be a cyberbullying episode. Yeah, we were going to... We didn't talk shit about Angela either. We, have, we haven't cyberbullied her in like two or three weeks. Yeah, I know. She's going to think we don't care about her anymore. But I don't know. we got to figure out. Oh, well, she did have... I don't have anything really bad to say about her. No, she's trying to work on her guard passing. So, you know... I don't know. You rolled with her today. She's doing pretty good. Yeah. She's... So... Sorry, Angela. Sorry. We're trying to figure out something bad to say about you. Maybe we... Maybe we just need you to coach the class so we're <laughs> being nice. <laughs> yeah, that could be it. We don't want to talk shit. We'll talk shit about you next week. Exactly. Exactly. So... All right, well. I guess that's it, man. It's called a wrap, man. Yeah. I'm hungry. Well, I need uh, some dinner. Sounds good. We'll talk to everybody next time. Be well. Yeah, Be well, fuck, fuckers. Kiss your babies. <laughs> Kiss your babies. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Grumpy Guy BJJ podcast. Thank you all for listening. You can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Please make sure to subscribe and leave us a review. It really does help and will allow us to keep putting out episodes. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, hit us up at grumpyguybjj at gmail.com. Also, go to our website, grumpyguybjj.com, and get signed up for podcast updates and get our free BJJ Improvement Starter Kit. That's it for now, so get on the mat, train hard, and talk to you all next week. Fuck down, climb with a permanent.
heard it from a hermit now fool Doggy school, foggy cool, got a froggy I'll tell Molly dude, now they're calling Daisy Duke Hanging by the lace of their shoes, no trace of the tools Shaped in your face, fuck the rules, snooze you lose One eye always open, it times two No clue, but soon a brief monsoon Might give you a view to choose Stay tuned, include, won't conclude to the end is near beware there's consequences for what you do <laughs> To me and Dean, the devil of many levels I keep on feeding for several of them rebels Me, myself, he died Me, myself, he died